impact is of if the planetary program really has. I guess one way to look at today, today is the day of challenge, where we're going to be challenged by our, our new views of Saturn. I think, it's, I think it's fair to say that everything we're seeing today, basically everything we're seeing today, will be Saturn. new. Uh, going on to the uh, satellites now, <clears throat> here is uh, our three views of uh, Hyperion. Uh, there have been all kinds of descriptions uh, given for it, uh, from a peanut to uh, various other things. Uh, it is obviously very irregular. Um, the scale is not the same uh, <clears throat> in each of these images. It reflects the, uh, uh, the approach to Titan, uh, this being taken at a distance of about 1.2 million, uh, 0.7 million, and 0.5 million. So it's growing in size as the spacecraft gets closer. But uh, the best description uh, that I could give it right now is it sort of looks like a thick hamburger patty or whatever. And here, you're looking into the edge of it. I wish I had a, uh, a little model or something I could show you. But new. Uh, I'd like to start off with the first slide, showing a uh, filtered view, actually, a. Uh, a mosaic of uh, several images just showing a filtered view of the very high latitudes on Saturn. There's a notch out uh, of the uh, north polar limb here. But uh, one can see the enormous amount of structure that's up at the very, very high latitudes. Now, here we see some of these uh, complex uh, uh, features, this, this brown spot that we've been looking at quite uh, recently, now taking on morphology uh, very similar to a spiral galaxy. And uh, we're seeing material actually flowing out and uh, forming uh, rather uh, uh, curious patterns. Here is that, uh, that high uh, velocity jet uh, showing somewhat of a, of a Rossby-like uh, structure, Rossby wave-like structure. And associated with it are some uh, cyclonic, that is uh, the equivalent of, uh, of low pressure areas, in a system that's not altogether different from the Earth. This is uh, the first view of Titan that we've released uh, uh, for the Voyager 2 encounter. It's not by any means our highest resolution uh, image, and we'll perhaps uh, uh, release uh, <clears throat> another at somewhat higher resolution. Uh, one can still see that uh, it's a rather uninspiring orange ball, and, uh, but uh, there is this north-south demarcation with uh, a line which still uh, is in there fairly close to the, to the equator of Titan. Well, uh, even though we're still, uh, we're uh, last night a million kilometers away from uh, Tethys, we did record a feature of uh, rather curious uh, appearance, uh, a very, very large uh, crater uh, on uh, one face of Tethys, a face that was not seen uh, by Voyager 1. The crater is huge. In fact, it is the largest crater uh, so far seen in the Saturnian system. It's about 400 kilometers, that is something in the order of 300 miles uh, in diameter. Uh, we see a central peak. Uh, we see a, uh, a ring of mountains that surround the, uh, the impact feature. Uh, <clears throat> the central peak is caused by the rebound of uh, material up from the center after the impact. And then as that central peak slumps back down, it pushes up the, uh, the mountain chain that, uh, or the mountain ridge that uh, that surrounds the, the impact crater of the planet. Well, there's an enormous amount of detail that's beginning to show up, and we expected this. This, uh, uh, this approach to Saturn uh, with Voyager 2 giving us a good high-resolution view down on the illuminated uh, uh, ring uh, system. Uh, early in the approach by Voyager 1, we had estimated that there were hundreds of rings, and uh, by the time we got through, uh, that estimate grew up to uh, perhaps something like a thousand 